Oh, darling, you must help me get ready. Okay. Quick, darling, pass me the necklace. And the earrings. And the bracelet. And the bracelet. And the bracelet. Now, darling, the shoes. You know, sometimes less is more. And sometimes more is more. Right, but sometimes less is more. Right, but sometimes more is more. Yes, but sometimes less is... And sometimes more is more. Okay. We are, darling. I'm ready. Where are you going? To the grocery store. Of course. Oh, and darling, sometimes more really is more. Hey everyone, I'm Andy. Welcome to Furniture Fables. Refinishing, sort of like the make under of the furniture fabling world. And in my opinion, really not the best option most of the time with the majority of the wayward pieces that I meet. However, every once in a while, the stars align and the best plan is clear to take her on back to the beginning with maybe just a sprinkling of redesign. Our fable today begins with this sturdy little table that I saw on Facebook Marketplace for $10. Most likely a mid-century side table or nightstand with a very dark stain. The table was in good condition, just very grubby, with a bump or a nick here or there, but otherwise very strong and sturdy, being a mix of solid wood, plywood, and what looked like very robust, good quality veneers. Perhaps mahogany or red oak, it was kind of hard to tell at this point. The only thing was that, aside from having a missing back, the piece was so dark that you couldn't really appreciate all her beautiful wood elements. And not only that, it looks like she was literally doused in varnish or lacquer. This is most likely the original factory finish, and you can see this is just a whole lot of overspray. There were drip marks all over the piece. This finish was just too dark and too shiny and too drippy. And so after briefly staring through her to the too many Amazon boxes I had out on the driveway, I began. I decided to bust out some heavy duty wipes. This piece was covered in just sort of basic dirt and dust and so these were great for getting a lot of that grime off. Then I sprayed it down with some simple green which is just a great basic grease cutting cleaner. Here you can see I've discovered a little archaeological find. These are names and phone numbers, as well as a channel guide. Hmm, let's see, TNT is 34, ESPN is 13, Lifetime 46. I guess it makes sense to have your channel guide in your side table drawer, right? All right, so here is a close-up of the finish on the top. You can see that whatever was used to seal the piece is thick and textured even up here on the top. And again, just how dark that stain is that they used.
So I decided this piece would be perfect to try out my new carbide scraper. A carbide blade is extremely tough, tougher than steel. And as a scraper with this ergonomic handle design, you can remove a lot of an old finish before you even plug in your sander. You can see this old finish scraped off pretty well. It almost looks like snakeskin, doesn't it? <laughs> Once I had scraped the top, I used my Rotex sander to sand back the majority of the stain. Then I used my surf prep with a foam abrasive to break up the old top coat on the trim edges, and it was actually able to get off a decent amount of the old stain as well. And then I used it on those kind of inset side details as well. Then I put the piece on its side and I did the same thing, scraping back as much of that old finish as possible. Wow, that's a lot of material. <laughs> I hit the feet as well as I worked and then flipped the piece again to do the other side. Here you can really see just how effective this scraper is on this project. The only thing to keep in mind is to keep your blade flat as you scrape so you don't gouge your piece. That's why this handle design is so important. It really helps to give you that good balance. Okay, now for the interior flat surfaces. Yep, you guessed it. I just did the same thing, scraping and then sanding as much as I could on all of those interior surfaces, trying hard not to bang into the sides as I did my sanding. Then I removed that original handle and then I used my scraper on the drawer, pulling back that finish on the face. I decided to go ahead and sand the information that I had discovered in the drawer bottom as well. I figured that any new owner probably wouldn't find it as charming as I did. And also if any of these phone numbers were current, the owners would probably appreciate me not passing along their information to a stranger, right? Ugh, every 
every corner of this piece was sticky and shiny. Even the drawer sides were sticky and shiny. Ugh, there wasn't a spot on this table that wasn't covered in this tacky top coat. Okay, that was the easy part. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, it was now time to get serious. I took out my chemical stripper. This is actually a somewhat new product to me. This is called Smart Strip. I have the Smart Strip Pro. And I began stippling it in with a chip brush all over the spots that I wasn't able to scrape or sand. So you typically want to layer chemical stripper on quite thick. Don't be stingy with it. And so once I had done that, I used this special laminated paper to wrap the table up so that the stripper could sit overnight without drying out. The next day I started scraping. I used a plastic scraper to start out with the drawer front and then I removed the paper from the body of the table and used my scraper to get into those grooves on the top trim edges. You'll notice that I am, of course, wearing gloves. These are nitrile gloves, which are okay for working with chemicals, but as soon as I began working with the steel wool here, they kind of started to fall apart on me and I had to replace them uh, every once in a while. So this step is super helpful in stripping old paint or any old finish. You dip your steel wool into whatever stripper you are using, and then you just really scrub it into these tough spots. Oh, this can be tedious, tough work, my friends. A lot of people talk about really enjoying stripping furniture, that it's very, very satisfying. And you know, I see what they mean, but I'm not sure that I'm one of them. <laughs> Actually, it's usually at this point that I feel like I'm not one of them. But as I go along, I start to get excited. Things are about to look up. We're about to turn a corner. <laughs> okay, now it was time to halt those chemicals and start my cleanup. So I took out my mineral spirits and used it to focus clean on the areas that had been chemically stripped and then to wipe down the entire piece. This is actually an important step in my opinion because when you're refinishing, your goal really is for every bit of wood fiber to essentially be in the same state, to have been prepared exactly the same way as any other wood fiber on the piece. That way your new finish has the best chance of looking smooth and even and professional. So if you're going to put some mineral spirits in one area, it's probably a good idea just to go ahead and apply it to your entire piece. I let everything dry and then I began my final finish sanding using a medium 180 grit abrasive all over the entire piece.
for the top trim, I used a medium grit rad pad to help me get into those grooves by hand, as well as those side inset details on the front. I hit the feet again, making sure to sand back the side I had missed that still had some stain on it. Those feet are looking very pretty. And then I did the top of the piece and the sides, making sure to sand in the direction of the grain, traveling across the entire expanse of the wood. Oh yes, and I hit those little spots on the top sides by hand. The last thing we'd want would be for some of that old dark finish peeking out from the drawer pocket. Okay, then I grabbed this new little set of mini finishers by Weller. You can see they come with all sorts of finishing tips. And I grabbed one of those little skinny hooked tools. I wanted to get into the small grooves on the trim especially on the top of the piece. So what I'm trying to do here is to get out any remaining stubborn chemical stripper because it's very sticky and gummy and it can just kind of get stuck in places like these trim edges or this routed detail here on one of the feet. I'm not pushing hard because I don't want to gouge the wood. I'm just kind of lightly scraping to get all of that stubborn, gunky stuff out. Okay, time to have this girl's back. I pulled out an old nail and then I measured out the width on this piece of thin plywood to get ready to cut to fit into the back of our piece. So I do have a table saw, but it's not currently set up. I actually want to see about making some space in my workshop for it. But the good news is that I can make this cut without a table saw. And so can you. All you need are some clamps and a circular saw. Once my plywood was all nice and secure, I ran my circular saw down the line, stopping because you don't want to be cutting as you're leaning out over something. I let my blade stop and then I lifted it out and came around to the other side to finish my cut. Then I measured the length and I cut that down. I gave the backing board a quick sand and then I set it aside and I sprayed the body and the drawer front with some water and I wiped back all of the dust thinking about what color I should paint this piece. Kidding! So if you know me, this is going to blow your mind a little, but I am going to leave this very warm wood alone. Well, actually, I'm not going to leave it alone. I'm going to give it a glorious drink of this. This is hemp oil wood finish. This one is by Fusion, and it is all I am going to use. I grabbed a chip brush and I began applying it all over the interior of the table. This hemp oil is considered food grade. You could use it to seal a cutting board or countertops, and so I don't have to wear gloves or a mask.
my goodness. Whew. With hemp oil, you just want to add a very liberal amount. And then you just let it sit for about 30 minutes before wiping it back. Can I tell you, I could practically hear this piece singing while I was applying this oil. It, it, it was like it started smiling at me. It was so, so happy. Now, it's true that hemp oil won't have the protective qualities that a polyurethane has, not even close probably. But here's the interesting thing. While having a really protected piece, something that is considered wipeable, is a wonderful, wonderful thing, there's actually a lot of growing interest in not using sealers like that, instead opting for hemp oils or beeswax or something uh, a little bit more environmentally friendly. If you remember John's fable, you'll remember that I had a few leftover wallpapers from Spoonflower and I thought I might punch up our backboard with a little mid-century flair. And I'm sure you're not too shocked. I chose the more dramatic one. <laughs> you might be thinking, oh, Andy, this looks a little crazy, but I don't know. I think it's going to work. You can tell me. You be honest once you see it but just but just wait give it a chance <laughs> i measured out the paper making sure the main stork graphic would be visible and then i attached it to the new board using my wallpaper spreader to smooth out any air bubbles and then i flipped it over and i trimmed the excess paper and voila Whoop, there we go there we are a custom backboard I grabbed some of my favorite scented wax. This is Big Mama's Butter by Dixie Bell. It's their orange scent. And I refreshed those once written on drawers. And then I added on the new back and reinstalled the original handle. Okay, do you remember our backless buddy? Too dark to see her beauty, dripping with lackluster lacquer from her toes to her top. Well, here she is now. Whoa. Just turn up the heat. No longer dark, drafty, and shiny. Our richly textured table warms the room like a potbelly stove with her new cognac color and matte finish. Her gorgeous grain, which we can now finally see and appreciate, can handle any decor I throw at it hugging it in a warm and strong embrace. And lest anyone think she's a square, her unexpected hit of designer paper gives her a touch of cool. Not usually a fan of red-toned woods, our small but mighty friend here has shown me a thing or two. So much so that I have to wonder, if she's making a hot comeback. So what did my surprising little refinished table project cost me? Well, a whole lot of electricity, that's for certain. The table itself was $10, another $5 for sanding pads, $5 for chemical stripper and that special paper. That designer wallpaper was $25.50. I'm gonna just throw in the whole amount, even though I had some left over. 
and another $5 for oil, rags, etc., bringing my total out-of-pocket cost to $50.50. So what will I list it for? Well, with the time that it took me and the quality of this little table, I think that a list price of about $275 sounds about right. I hope that you enjoyed this stripped down fable. If so, please give me a big thumbs up. That one little click is a huge help to my channel. And let me know, what did you think? Are you missing paint? Are you loving this natural stripped down look? Do you think I'm crazy for not putting a poly on the top? Thank you so much for joining me, my friends. I will see you next time for more Furniture Fables.